Our correspondent Pierre Kloschendler speaking to the Israeli ambassador in Ukraine, Michael Brodsky, about the unfolding situation. Let's take a listen. There is an emergency. Is the embassy preparing for evacuation or just decided to stay with reinforcement of the staff in Kiev? The embassy is preparing for all sorts of scenarios, but as of today, we are staying here in Ukraine because our presence here is necessary for Israelis who are staying here in Ukraine. We handle consular inquiries and also send reinforcements from the country to Ukraine to assist in arranging documents and registering children. At the same time, we continue to call on Israeli citizens to leave the country as soon as possible. Are you really afraid that war will break out in the coming days, as Joe Biden and Boris Johnson estimate? There are apocalyptic scenarios, but it is not seen in the field. We feel an increase in escalation, and we think we are approaching the decision point. But one does not know what will happen, when it will happen, and whether it will happen. We prepare for any scenario, and even if there is a small chance, and that chance is greater today than it was a week or two ago, for an attack or military activity. The right thing, right now, is to leave the country and be safe in Israel until things work out here. Then, of course, it will be possible to return. We are hearing all the time talks about Kiev that might be bombed or occupied by Russian soldiers. Are you also preparing in Lviv? We have opened a consular post in Lviv. Our people are there. If we reach an emergency of extreme escalation, we are also considering moving to Lviv. But as mentioned, we are currently staying here and following what is happening. No scenario can be ruled out. We do not know what is going to happen. So we're preparing for everything. We hope for the best, but we're preparing for the worst. There have been reports in the Israeli media that Israel has turned to Russia to ensure humanitarian corridor. This is considered an aggressive move towards the Ukrainian government. Maybe you made a mistake? We keep the channels of dialogue open. We talk all the time with both Russia and Ukraine and also the American and European partners. And we will continue to talk to everyone because our top priority is the security of the staff and the security of the citizens. But the messages we conveyed to the Russians in the same conversation that took place a few days ago are first and foremost a message of de-escalation. But we are not interested in seeing any kind of military escalation here. And the second message, our real concern for the security of the staff and the security of the citizens. But it was interpreted differently, as if a situation in which Russia controls Ukraine. I think this is a misinterpretation. I had a conversation here at the Foreign Office, a very polite and clear conversation. I explained the intention, and I think that that explanation was accepted.